Hey there, Tundra Nation. Just like Nancy Pelosi, time is a hideous B word that will never stop. One day you're enjoying the splendors of youth and before you know it, your grandkids are showing you how to search for the lowest Metamucil prices on the electrified computer machine. Time's miserable slog forward means generations age too. Baby boomers went from counterculture recreation to over-the-counter medication, and the Gen Xers and older millennials are right there behind them sporting more gray hair than a convention of Gandalf cosplayers. For gun culture, this means the G-Watt loadout of the 2000s while it's aging faster than discount bananas, and Gen Xers and millennials who cling to their old ways, well, they're the new FUDs. What did you say? The first kind of new FUD is the HK supremacist. Sure, there was once a day when HK created the most durable and war-proven firearms the world had ever seen, but lately their catalog is more dated than your Uncle Ned's Facebook memes. I know more than you. Who knew the minions were Republicans? HK will sell you a brand new pistol that's called Tactical, but it doesn't even have an optics cut, and holy crap, they still offer every handgun in 40 Smith & Wesson. Oh, that is more turn of the century than Limp Biscuit playing in an XFL halftime show. Yet, you still have the diehard fanatic that won't acknowledge that it's no longer 2008. They think HK prioritizing their 20-year military contracts over modern innovation is their strength. Do you still use a Motorola flip phone that has no internet access? Yeah, I didn't think so. So then why are you shooting a USB chambered in the FBI's forgotten bastard cartridge? If later Hosen and Polka aren't enough to vanquish the myth of Teutonic supremacy once and for all, then comparing the 416 to any modern and sensible combat rifle will. Oh, and don't even get me started on the simps that are holding out for the G11 and hoping that'll come to pass, or the Americans that are trying to get their hands on a genuine MP7. That is a good day. The world has moved on from you, and HK FUD, you're about as out of time as a drunk cover band attempting to play a Tool song. Do you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff? I know I do. If so, then check out TNVC.com for all your seeing stuff needs, because we'll be seeing you tonight. The next form of new FUD is the Glock Fanatic. Glock owners, well, they can be found in every age in every demographic. Every time a gun shop employee is just too lazy to explain to a newbie why different people prefer different handguns, and a new customer is too lazy to research specs on the internet for a pistol, an Austrian company that's too lazy to create a second design in 40 years gets a brand new sale. It's the laziness hat trick, folks. The trifecta. This is the complete explanation as to why Glock still rule the sales charts, and due to the law of confirmation bias, people have retroactively defended a purchase that they've already made. He's just a little out of his mind, sir. But the Glock FUD is a special kind of Glock tard, where he meets any argument with the exact same rhetoric he himself heard 20 years ago from the 1911 boomers, and he doesn't even realize that he's turned into the same sad little old man. <laughs> When anybody offers a reason why they buy an M&P 2.0, or a Walther PDP, or a CZ P10C that offers substantial improvements in specs, ergos, and trigger quality, he just says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Which was the same copium the 1911 boomers were absolutely addicted to. And just like the 1911 boomers, the Glock FUD lets the aftermarket do the heavy lifting for him. Any fault is met with, there's an aftermarket solution for that. Any criticism of the Glock's inherent quality is greeted with a cry of sounds like a training issue. Get good, loser. Sound familiar? <laughs> Well, it should. It's the same thing that the FUDs have been saying for decades now, really. Glock boys using cope excuses to deal with the reality of the world leaving them behind is a one-to-one -one mirror image of any boomer FUD that they claim that they used to hate. Like Anakin, they have become the very thing they swore to destroy. Glock FUDs, I challenge you something. Go 30 days without uttering the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But instead, listen to and address the factors that people are actually talking about when they tell you they like their VP9 or Canic SFX more than that hideous Duplo block 
you call a firearm. Your gun is more cringe than a 90s boy band, so maybe it's time to say bye, bye, bye. While we're talking about the new FUDs, how can we forget the carry handle squad? You claim your 90s flavored rifle is vintage drip, but the only drip here is you. Your sighting system gives you the long range accuracy of Mr. Magoo on bath salts, and you justify it by pretending every rifleman has to train on irons first to even be worthy of respect. This is kind of like saying in order to qualify as a great track and field athlete, the Olympic sprinter who won a gold medal needs to duplicate his four second 40 yard dash while wearing wooden clogs. No sane person defines competency by deliberately nerfing yourself. What do you think an acclaimed musician proves himself by playing his masterpiece on a toy ukulele just to score Chad points online? Actually, yes. Zach Wilde did that, I think. See if you can find that, Kush. Some people say my love cannot be true. While it's true that past generations rocked irons only, they were going up against an enemy who were similarly technologically impaired. On purpose, screwing yourself up is about as stupid as putting your entire retirement savings into Dogecoin. I know at least one of you did that. Compared to the red dot guy, you're about as slow and dyslexic as a third grader reading Gravity's Rainbow. The odds of you making hits beyond 300 yards are as slim as an Ethiopian Greyhound. But go ahead and gloat about how cool it looks while you do your Vietnam cosplay. <laughs> Uh, an Ethiopian Greyhound. That one got me. Hey there, Tundra Nation. Welcome to the fucking blooper reel. Of course, the next category of new FUDs are the double action, single action, hammer fired pistol guys. A more stubborn gun subculture just, well, it just doesn't exist. Sure, the CZ-75, the Beretta 92, and the SIG-226 are pretty badass, I guess. Technically, I mean a trigger that's heavier than Lizzo on a Baskin Robin spree is going to be more difficult to accidentally discharge than a striker trigger, so great job. But that doesn't mean that it's practical for a concealed carry choice for casuals in 2024. These pistols came from a time when sidearms were exclusively carried by cops in duty holsters that were large enough to fit a U-Haul inside. Now you're going to ask a 5'10", 170 pound Joe Normie to fit one down the front of his waistband without looking like he has a gigantic erection the size of an elephant femur? Yeah, that's not going to happen. Mr. Bergen, do you have a massive erection? Really? Yes, I do. Um... Attempting to conceal your classic double action, single action pistol is guaranteed to be slightly awkward at best and a disaster at worst, especially if you have a two on two pickup basketball game at the park planned. Not only are they not realistic for concealment, but do you really want a handgun with the world's most challenging trigger as your target gun? Yeah, I didn't think so. Much like the AR carry handle guy who prides himself on having a higher level of skill necessary to get good results while using antiquated 90s technology 25 years past the expiration date, the hammer fud feels like a champ pounding out Clover's offhand with his trusty Beretta. There is only one problem though. He couldn't hit the broadside of a blockbuster video. Hammer FUD has all the flinch of Martin Riggs, but none of the accuracy. The double action, single action enthusiast could be a decent marksman if he just evolved into the 21st century so that he could actually enjoy a first round trigger pull that wasn't more difficult to execute than Rasputin. Instead, he's a stuck in his ways curmudgeon, making him the perfect new FUD. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. Next up, we've got the bullpup diehards. Now, I know what you might be saying in the comment section right now. How could a forward-thinking, futuristic design like the bullpup possibly be a FUD category? Well, to answer your question simply, it's this. It's neither futuristic nor a good idea. In fact, bullpups were created in the mid 20th century, seemingly in response to a demand from European militaries who were tired of their guns being simple and working all the time, I guess. Okay, I get it. It makes sense that the French created the FAMAS. I mean, they invented existential philosophy. They hate themselves and obviously want to suffer. But by now, even the most masochistic Euro trash, they've begrudgingly started to admit that a simpler gun with increased reliability, parts availability, and ease of maintenance would be more practical. The use of bullpups worldwide has decreased dramatically, thank God. 
But who are the holdouts still clinging to this antiquated technology that's been proven to be inferior? You guessed it, it's the new FUDs. Shockingly, the bullpup FUD does not see it this way. In his mind, he's on the cutting edge and those AR plebs, well, they're about to be proven wrong any day now. <laughs> yes, any day now. One eternity later. The bullpup FUD is waiting for a future that never happens, and until it does, he's more than happy to boast about how right he is and how wrong you're going to be. His trigger is more squishy and unpleasant than sashimi that's been left out in the sun for a day, but he's just going to tell you about how compact it is. His function and accuracy are both less reliable than a phone call from a nice stranger offering you an extension on your car's warranty, but he'll just tell you how great the balance is. The bullpup diehard is missing the forest for the trees and refuses to see reason. That's why he's one of the new FUDs. Last on our list of new FUDs is the AK Purist. The cornerstone of FUDism, folks, is the narrow-mindedness and refusal to see anybody else's perspective, especially when that perspective challenges your firmly held borderline religious beliefs. The AK Purist is a FUD just for being so dogmatic and puritanical. I mean, he will excommunicate you if he ever even finds out you've been anywhere near Palmetto State's website. The AK Purist will only shoot guns made in former Comblock states. He'll only use Soviet calibers. He'll only ever associate with other AK diehards. This zealot puts the fun back in fundamentalist. Actually, you know what? No, wait. This guy puts the mental back in fundamentalist because he's goddamn crazy. Even Russia themselves has moved on from the wood and steel doctrine of old Mickey K and has begun to use force multipliers like polymer furniture as early as the late 90s. Yet, comrade, we need to turn back the clock even a bit further. That was a terrible Russian accent. The AK FUD likes his irons crooked and his furniture sized for garden gnomes. Fun fact, if it ever feels like an AK's furniture is the size and quality of a 19th century's children's toy that was whittled by a Russian peasant, well, it's because it's not that far off from the truth. Soviet conscripts were frequently malnourished 16-year-olds, so a vintage AK is about as ergonomic as wearing platform shoes while mountain climbing. Muzzle flash will serve as your weapon light, and the only red dots that you're gonna get on your gun will be your own blood when you slice your hand open on the poorly cut selector switch while racking the bolts. The AK FUD doesn't even want to consider updating his ancient Cold War tech. He's made it too much of his own personality, and now he's pot committed. But so are all those old timers rocking bolt action. So think about what road you're going down, pal. You even got the same wood furniture. Fascinating material. I think the bottom line here is that it's not the gun that makes the FUD. It's the tiny size of his brain. So shoot whatever gun you want, but be open to better possibilities. Otherwise, you'll be about as backward as Fred Durst's baseball cap, and you'll be surprised at just how fast two decades have gone by. Kinda like me. Most importantly, never justify compromise legislation that grabs somebody else's gun instead of yours. Subscribe, folks.